Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. I feel like this is a good topic to go over. How to plan. Oh, where are we at? Okay. So we're gonna go over the key traders of the week. Um, it's gonna be a fun one. Uh, or the market sentiment will be a fun one. Um, going over uh, where I think the market headed, where I think it's at. Uh, we're gonna go over tra my favorite trader topics and fallacies that like kind of spark up throughout the week that I feel are important to touch up on so that we all improve kind of. We're all kind of like reminded of the same, uh, I don't wanna say lessons, but I mean, trading, trading tips. Um, I, I, I label this week the recovery ward because that's probably what a lot of people need. And we'll end this, the webinar with Q&A. So if this is your first webinar, please feel free. You guys can just have fun in the chat. Like I don't care if you guys throw memes on here. It doesn't even matter just while I'm talking. I don't, you know, I won't get, you know, it'll just, it'll give me a break to get, get a quick laugh. You guys can ask questions at any time at the end of the webinar. We're going to have the formal Q&A. But if, if you have a question about what I'm saying during the, during the presentation, Go ahead, throw it out there. I'll try, if I see it, I'll get to it. Um, if not, I'll get to it at the end of the webinar. All right, so let's get started. Uh, yes, I agree. Mental capital is everything. That's why I made mental capital. Um, I made the mental capital webinar that I made. I made that one in Philly in the one year because I felt like that's honestly, the, if, there, if I had to deem one, the most important thing in trading, this is it. Um, that's why I did it in Philly live. Anyway, so this is, I thought I'd start with my HEPA trade today. Ooh, that's not the whole chart. I grabbed the wrong one. Oh, well, I'll sh you guys will see my HEPA, my HEPA mess today. If I get it ready. All right, so HEPA was a trade where, I mean, at the open, if you guys were in the chat room, you guys heard me say, man, this stock is really choppy, right? Man, this stock is really choppy. I almost don't even want to be a part of it. So just go. Just going in, like this is a B setup for me. This was definitely a B setup just because I thought about how choppy it was. But, you know, like the degenerate that I am, I still wanted to trade it if I could find an opportunity. And, you know, I saw James doing a hell of a job scalping. I'm like, you know what? I can do that. And, like, so I, I showed it the next pop for a quick scalp uh, because I thought it was choppy. I'm like, you know what? You know, it is, I can, I can take advantage of like choppy socks. I just have to short into strength and cover the dips and vice versa. Low hanging fruit trade. And I wanted to include this just because I never ever do. I, I, I don't ever really show a lot of my low hanging fruit trades <laughs> just because they're normally quick, small scalps like this. But um, I got asked questions about this one and this one I'm gonna, this one's kind of gonna be a highlight of a video or not a video. This is gonna be a highlight of what I talk about near the end of the webinar. So I'll come back to this one, but I use the right line and that's what we're going to be talking about using the right line. Um, red to green is a very powerful line. I got a couple questions on why I didn't wait for 10 or 10 25. Right. So I'll go over that later, but I, this was basically just short into red to green, very classic setup gap down, push into red to green, not a whole lot of volume. Look at this 15 to 20,000 shares, very low hanging fruit. You know, it's way down off its highs. Um, I just quickly nailed and bailed. I wanted to show more of the chart because as you, you know, I could have held some, but in this market, I wasn't trying to attempt to do like non niche fading. I'm not a big fader in general, but especially in this bull, in this insanely like buy everything market, I wasn't planning on holding it. In fact, I was kind of hoping we were going to push back up here and I can get maybe a short up here and a, and a quick scalp cover, but we didn't get it. Uh, WWR, this was a quick morning trade. You'll notice a lot of my, tr most of my trades are in the mornings, guys. Like I, I normally trade the morning only skip the midday, you know, besides small scalps, I, you know, I might try to scalp small midday, but, or, and then I wait for the end of the day and I wait for either end of the day squeezes or end of the day trend breaks, right? Those are the majority of most of my trades. Um, so this was two trades. So I have two here. One was a stuff short. 
And I'll go over the part of this too. I waited for the nine to fail first. Now, sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. And the reason why I didn't here was because there was a potential dangerous domino here. The fact that we had like a high of day at like 880 or 885 or something like that. And nine was like looming right above that. So uh, I know that dominoes are something I really have to be careful of when I am, or what I get excited about when I'm on the long side, but it's something I have to be careful about when I'm on the short side. Because like, if this was gonna break high of day, if there's momentum for breaking high of day that can carry and domino into breaking it over nine. And if I, yes, yes, oh, this, I have one more. This was another one. Oh, see, like, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not trading perfectly either on these days. So uh, this one, I try to wash out long one, right? So one thing to note is this wash out longs work a lot better when the SSR is on. And that's just, maybe that's just me. I'm, I'm better at like, I'm better at doing SSR tape reading than I am when they're not SSR. But um, I lost on half size waiting for this to hold. And this is, this is an example of why um, you don't, act, like I just got off the phone with someone today. This is an example of why you don't, um, this, I, I, why you don't add to your losers forever. Because like, had I put in, like, the, there's a couple of traders who nailed this. I, I think I saw a couple of charts on Twitter where they nailed this, they added into here. And I mean, kudos to them for having the conviction. I can't do that. That's just something I can't do. So what I like to do is when I when I go on these um, these trades where I'm going against the grain like stuffs, um, they're always going to be half size trades um, when I'm on the front side of the move until like hopefully sometimes it gives me a chance to add where I feel I'm right and I can fix my risk. The point of this trade is to the point of this idea is to. Um, only be full size when you have fixed risk, right? That's the goal of when I try to short stuffs or buy washouts. The goal is to only be full size when you have fixed risk. So that means like if you're adding into a, a stock that's going against you, you start in and you add up to half. And then when you feel something has changed where you feel the bottom is in for a long or the top is in for a short, you can add in the rest. Anyway, market sentiment. Um, now, all of these, now, so you guys might look a little confused, like there's so much red. All of these stocks were green. <laughs> Every single one of these stocks are green. But to be fair with all the other market participants, these are the market participants over here that I felt, given that we, everyone knew we were in a hot market, all of these stocks spiked. And, and had, you know, green, strong momentum. But these are the ones that gave up their momentum. And these are the ones that kind of held on, right? These are the ones that held on and sustained the volume, kept the market momentum going, right? And so we had a whole lot of them. Like, I um, just, like, literally the, my, my low hanging, like, I located, like, five stocks today. My low hanging fruit list um, was so large today. And it's going to be large tomorrow, like, these are the good times to take advantage of low hanging fruit plays because there's just look at all, all of these turn into low hanging fruits. All of these will turn into low hanging fruits, right? Eventually once new stocks come, these all turn into it. Oh, I, I noticed I have IP, IPWR in there twice. Anyway, positives is the spy is really strong. We have tons of runners, no offerings yet. And it's in everybody's market, meaning everybody, you know, like if you're patient, like, there are low hanging trades. There are first bounce trades. There are stuff short trades. There are breakout trades. There's washout longs. There's, there's trades for scalpers. There's trades for death line traders. There's trades for overextended trend breaks, right? There are so, every single pattern is happening and it's literally everybody can find their trade in this market. Now, the very important thing to take, it, uh, to take heed of in this market is be, just because there's so much stuff moving, that doesn't mean that you can be less of a sniper it just you know you still have to be a sniper and still only pick your setups the thing is, is that you should be getting more of the setups right that's that's what's so good about this market is you should be getting more of your setups but that doesn't mean that you just abandon the setups because there's fun stocks moving right that's where you get in trouble 
Negatives, 300 did reject on the SPY. Uh, I think a possible, of, possible retest of 285 could be coming. We'll see. Um, but it looks like the October fear, it could have just been that dip. And so that would be, that would be a positive. What I, so one of the topics I kind of want to talk about is proper locating. And this is very important when we're in this market. Um, in this market, it's very easy to FOMO and locate more than you need, more stocks than you need and end up down a whole lot of money before the day even starts. Right. And this, and then what normally like this kind of goes to get hand in hand with the buyers with this, with this crazy market is you locate more than you want. You start off red. And when you're starting off red, um, you have the pressure to make your money back. And it's just, I mean, you have to manage that. Right. So locating the wrong amounts is bad. Obviously uh, most of the time you're going to be over locating and, the way you overlocate is you locate too much size, right? It, you, do, you locate an ego size because you want to feel relevant. You know, like, you know, the big boys are trading those 10,000 share positions, right? Like those 10,000 share positions. And you just like, you locate like 8K or something like that. Right. And like, you never trade over two or 3K or 4K, but you just go for the eight to 10K because you want to, you know, you might be embarrassed to ask for a little bit or something, whatever it is like, um, that's, that's one reason you have FOMO, right? You're locating every stock because you can't bear to miss an opportunity, right? It's like you, you, you cannot possibly fathom, like, you, you know, that the one stock you don't locate is the one that's going to run, or you know, that the one stock that you don't locate is the one that's going to give you the good setup. Right. And so you just locate everything. I mean, this is, I mean, you're just digging yourself in a grave because now you're going to feel the need to, to use all of these or go big on at least one of them to make back your locate money. Revenge. And this is the one that I'm guilty of doing. Um, sometimes I like know I'm going to lose for like in the back of my mind, I know I'm going to lose first and, um, and I know I'm going to need to fix it. So I locate more. I, I don't do this anymore because I catch myself when I'm doing it, but a couple of years ago, this is what I used to do. Like I would locate more than I needed because I knew that like I would, I might need that exercise to fix my bat, to fix the, the first trade. Right. And this is a huge no, no. Right. Because I mean, I, I stopped for a reason. I would have gone broke. Um, you know, knowing you might lose first and wanting to fix it. You can't, you can't do that. Just locate your size and that's it. You know, habit. Now, a lot of us trade too big in the beginning of our trading careers, right? A lot of us trade too big. Most of us do. We, we, we have beginning success. We size up. Um, and, but, and you're used to trading bigger. Like you have that, I used to trade this size. And, you know, when you were stupid. And ego is keeping you locating that much, right? That's locating the wrong amount. Like if it's just ingrained where you, it's just a habit, you always locate 10 K you gotta cut that shit out. If you only ever use three K right. And you can just start by going, cutting it in half, even, even if it's still more cut it in half under locating. Some people are afraid to locate because they don't want to spend money. Now I, I almost didn't want to include this because I feel like it's such a minority because I feel like people are locate happy as opposed to locate afraid, but I'm sure there's some people in this room who are locate afraid, right? Some people just are just, they don't want to spend the money. They wait for their perfect setup to appear and then want to locate. But like, bro, sis, too bad. Like you can't do that. It's you missed your opportunity. There are some trades that you have to locate at the start of the day, point blank. And normally it's the day ones. Um, when your entry ceases to make sense, undisciplined stubbornness is what keeps you in, right? Oh shit. That's supposed to be on the next slide. Crap. Um, anyway, not associate. Yeah, this is supposed to be on the next side. Um, not associate, not associating size with the setup. So uh, you can uh, locate, but a, a stock and it, it could be one of your a setups and you're not locating enough, right? Like you're not locating enough to make enough money on your a setup, right? If you know, like some people locate the same amount for every single trade. Um, they'll look at the same amount of shares for every single stock, but some stocks might be worth more size, right? Some trades are your ACE setups and you want to locate more of that. And maybe you need to locate more 
of maybe you need to locate more of your your a setups or less on your b setups but you should be locating more of your your favorite stocks Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.